All right, I don't know about you, but I find these particular types of sinks pretty annoying. I don't really get what they're doing. They never seem to work when I want them to. So come on, let's go figure it out. So before we start messing around with the actual sink, let's imagine how an automatic sink might work if instead of it being a machine, it acted more like a person. I'm thinking that this part of the sink that I'll call the sensor is kind of like an eyeball connected to a brain. If we think of it like an eyeball, then when hands are in front of the eye and the lights overhead bounce light off of the hands and into the eye, then the eye takes that light and turns it into a signal that gets sent to the brain, which recognizes it as a hand. And this makes the sink turn on. So what is the sink looking for? The light that our eyes see is what we know as visible light. This is just one type of light. Some of the shorter and more damaging types of light are known as cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet light. Then the longer types of light are infrared, microwave, radar, and radio. Let's see if the sensor is looking for visible light by turning off the lights. Well, it looks like the sink works without the lights on, so it's not looking for visible light. Maybe it's looking for a different type of light, such as infrared light. This light exists in two general types. There's heat infrared and near infrared. Heat infrared is what you might think of when you see a thermal image of someone's hand. So when I take something that doesn't give off heat infrared, like a notepad, and hold it up to the sensor, the sink turns on. That means the sensor probably isn't looking for heat infrared. Well, what about near infrared? Near infrared is used for things like TV remotes. Digital cameras happen to be able to see near infrared as a purplish kind of light. To our eyes, this part of the remote just looks black. But when I push a button on the remote and point it at the camera, you can see flashing purple lights. This is near infrared light. To check if the sensor was looking for near infrared, I knew my cell phone camera used a near infrared laser for autofocus, which you could see as this purple dot. When I covered up the laser and pointed at the sensor for a while, the sink never came on. But as soon as I took my hand off the laser, the sink turned on right away. This meant that the sensor is definitely measuring near infrared light, but how? So if we go back to the eye example, instead of looking for the reflection of visible light, the sensor is probably looking for the reflection of infrared light. That means the sink probably has its own near infrared light that it is pointing at our hands and it's looking for the reflection of that near infrared light. Maybe the sensor is looking for a certain intensity of light. Above this level, the sink turns on, but below this level, the sink stays off. To test this, I tilted my hand from side to side, imagining that I was deflecting the infrared beam from the sink and changing the amount of light getting back to the sensor. I could rotate my hand to get just below that threshold, and then rotate my hand back the other direction to reflect just enough light to turn it back on. So now we know the sensor needs a certain amount of infrared light reflected back. But does my hand location matter? When I try all these different places for my hands in the sink, we could think about the different amounts of infrared light that is being reflected back to the sensor. All of these places reflect too little infrared light, but when my hands are right in front of the sensor, enough light is reflected back to turn the sink on. Great, with the knowledge of the best place to put our hands, does the hand distance matter? I took a notepad and a ruler and checked that the sink would turn on at different distances. All the way from 1 to 12 inches, the sink turned on. But once the notepad was more than 12 inches away, the sink didn't turn on. And this makes total sense, because we wouldn't want the sink to turn on unless our hands were in the area of the sink bowl. Okay. Now we know we want to bounce back as much infrared light as possible. But does time play a part? Going back to that graph from earlier, maybe there is a certain length of time that the sensor needs signal before it will turn on the water. That would mean if there's enough light, but it's not there for long enough, no water. 
if there's too little light, but it's there for a long enough period of time, still no water. Only when there's enough light and it's there for long enough, then the water turns on. I recorded my hand going in front of the sensor for different amounts of time and put a timestamp on it so we could slow down the video and see exactly how long it takes from when I put my hand in front of the sensor until the water turns on. Once my hand is there for about 21 to 22 frames, which equates to about one second, the sink turns on. That means that the sink does need a certain amount of time that we could say is about one second. So if we take everything that we learned and put it all together, the best way to turn the sink on should be giving it a nice big surface to reflect light off of. Putting your hand in front of the sensor to get the most near infrared light reflected back and leaving your hand there for about one second. And when all of this is done together, next time I go to the sink, I don't really have a reason to get annoyed at it anymore. Wait, hold on. Waving your hands around the sink sometimes makes the seat turn on, right? That's gotta be doing something, right? Wrong? I don't know. What do you all think? Do some tests, figure it out. Maybe your automatic sink works completely different. Until next time, bye.